Amen. For those who are watching via our stream, you may not be able to tell it. Maybe it's not coming across, but we're having church up in here today. Amen. And we are grateful for, uh, for it. Amen. Uh, I want to um, finish this thing. I've been seeing like it's dragged on for a bit, but I just want to finish this thing. We've been talking about fake faith and um, talking about how we can tell if someone has a faith that is false, a fake faith. And if you remember, it's been a minute, but we said that you can tell because fake faith has no love and fake faith has no light. People are in darkness. People don't treat one another right. There's no love. And so I want to finish it today with fake faith has no life. Um, and if you have no life, then you're dead. A amen. And um, you, can, you can fake faith for a long time, but somewhere along the line, the spirit comes through and quickens. That's what the Bible says. And what does that word quicken mean? It means to make alive. So if you're dead, then you, if you're dead, then the spirit will quicken you and give you life. But if you have no life, then you're still dead, which means the spirit has not entered into you yet. So I want to just finish that up today and talk about that this morning. So I want to look at James chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 20. Yeah. Amen. Um, I'm going to read... Um, New King James this morning, okay? But you can keep that up there. That's fine. Keep that up there. And the reason I want to read New King James, I looked at several versions, and as you can see on the screen, it, you, amen, it says that faith without works is useless. But I want to emphasize through New King James, it says faith without works is dead. Let's read verse number 20. It says, but do you want to know, O foolish man? Do you, do you really want to know? that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? And do you see faith was working together with his works and by works it was made perfect because the scripture was fulfilled saying Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. So you see that a man is justified by works and not just by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab, the harlot, the prostitute, also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and the application of his word. Fake faith. Fake faith. There's a story of a man... His name was Old Man Jenkins. And nobody in here named Jenkins, is it? Okay. <laughs> Old Man Jenkins. His wife was concerned about him because he, he just wasn't acting right. He didn't look good. His health was declining. So she said to him, you, you don't look good. You need to call a doctor. He said, I'm okay. I'm fine. She went ahead and called the doctor in, in any way. He came and he examined him and he said, no, you're not doing good at all. Matter of fact, I can't even get a pulse from you. He said, technically you're dead, but it's amazing that you're still here. I can't get a pulse. He said, no, doc, I'm okay. I'm fine. I don't need to go to the doctor. The next day, old man Jenkins died. They had a funeral. It was a great funeral, great home going. Well, I don't know. Maybe it was a funeral. They took him to the cemetery. They buried him. And the widow went home. The next day, the baker 
of the town was on his way to work and he passed the cemetery and when he looked over there was old man Jenkins sitting on the cemetery wall he stopped the car and went over and he said didn't they just bury you yesterday he said I'm not dead whatever they did wasn't right He went about his business confused. Next came a newspaper truck. They saw him. They had reported the, the, the funeral and the death. And they went over and they said, what are you doing here? You're dead. He said, I'm not dead. I'm fine. Finally, word got back to his wife and said, listen, I don't want to scare you. But it's been reported that your husband has been seen at the graveyard. Well, of course, we buried him. His grave is there. It's, no, 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 no. He's sitting on the wall talking to people. She was like, what? So she goes and investigates, and sure enough, there's old man Jenkins sitting on the wall in the cemetery. She said, what are you doing here? He said, well, I don't know. I'm not dead. I feel fine. So now it became a concern for the town because they know this man died. They buried this man. Yet he's showing up. He's appearing. He's telling people he's fine. He's sitting on the wall of the cemetery, and the town is concerned. So finally, somebody said, here's what we'll do. Let's write a news article, and let's write a subscription on a tombstone. So he can read it to see that he truly did. So they threw a newspaper into the gravesite. They put the tombstone in there, and old man Jenkins read this, the article and read the tombstone, and he got a little confused. He said, "Am I dead?" And they said, "Yeah." So it said, "Here lies the body of old man Jenkins, born 1901, died." 2001, he was 100. He said, I must really be dead. And so, after reading that, he went and found a shovel, redug up his grave, <laughs> jumped in the hole, and some folks came by and covered him up. And the story says they never heard from old man Jenkins again. <sighs> now, y'all laughing and saying, Pastor, where you come up with that one? <laughs> See, the truth of the matter is there are a lot of people in church whose name is old man Jenkins who truthfully are dead, but you pop up on the church wall every Sunday. <laughs> and when people look at you, you go, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. But yet you are dead. And so I was hoping today to read it to you <laughs> so that maybe if you read it, you'd understand that you have died and you are dead in trespasses and sins and that you've been walking around with this falsity that you are alive because fake faith has no life. Are y'all with me here? James has been telling, uh, telling this to us through, the, through this chapter, chapter two, when he talks about this fake faith. Matter of fact, I could ask the question, how many people in here believe in God? Raise your hand. I want to see it. How many people in here believe in God? Okay, I'll put you on the spot. Thank you. Good. Put your hands down. Now, that didn't mean nothing to me. And the reason it didn't mean anything to me because the Bible says the demons believe in God. Now, I didn't say some of y'all were demons. I'm just saying that the Bible says that the demons also believe in God. So when we say we believe in God, that doesn't really mean much, especially since the demons also believe. Where's the separation? 
I know I've got some school teachers and some English majors in here. So, you know, I wasn't, you know, I, I, I barely passed English. Barely. But I could read. So I went to Oxford Dictionary. And then I backed it up with Webster's Dictionary. And I found out that faith simply means to believe in something or someone. To, to, to believe or to really understand about something or someone. And then it said this. This is what really caught me. It said, and faith, back me up, teachers, is a noun. It's a noun. So it kind of perplexed me until I read further, and then I pulled out a Bible dictionary. And it said, faith, which it is a noun, which means to believe in someone or something, also is a verb. Watch this. This is, this is the dictionary. It said, because what you believe in and put your faith in, you show it by your action. If I say I believe in something, then I demonstrate my belief in my action. That's when it becomes a verb, which is an action word. Are y'all with me here? And so what James is saying to us when we talk about this fake faith is everybody has faith. Everybody believes in God. Everybody, Lottie and Dottie. You know, sometimes I just don't like telling people I'm a preacher. I like to get in the elevator, talk to people about the game, hear them cuss about those commanders. <laughs> right? And, oh, I'm sorry. And laugh. And then all of a sudden... The moment they find out if I slip up and say I'm a preacher, the conversation shifts. Oh, oh excuse me, Rev. Uh, I ain't been to church in a while, you know. I could tell. Everybody believes in God. Everybody, which is nothing new. The devil believes in God. The problem is, do I take what I believe and put it into action? And if you remember, I gave you this, the, the two sides of the coin a couple of sermons back saying that on one side, it's your faith to God. The other side, it's your faith to men. Both sides of the coin have to be activated. Down in Philadelphia, they have something called, um, what, what do they call it? Uh, um, the row place where they row. Down the Schuylkill River. What's it called? No. How? Yeah, there it is. And all the colleges have their boats on this river where they practice oaring. You know what I discovered? They have two oars. Why? Because if they only row with one, they go in a circle. If they only row with the other one, they go in a circle. Y'all better stay with me on this. So they got to row both oars in order to go forward. Can I say this to you? You've got faith. Wonderful. But without the other side, you're just going in circles. They both have to work together in order for you to get to where God wants you to be. And so when we get to this particular text at the end of this, this chapter, when he talks about faith and he says, listen, there's some fake faith in the house. I'm not calling you fake. There's some fake faith in the house. And how can I tell? I can tell because when folks are demonstrating fake faith, there's no love. They don't care about one another. That was the Sunday school lesson today. They don't care about one another. Secondly, there's no light, meaning what? They're living, sitting in darkness and love it. The Bible says men love darkness. But see, I love God. God sees better at night than he does during the day. You can go down the street, turn twice, go to a corner, and do your dirt at midnight. God sees a black ant on a black rock at midnight. God sees it all. So men love darkness. But then he says, the other way you know there's fake faith is because men not only uh, have no love and they have no light, but they have no life. And James says, I want to prove it to you by three examples. Just three examples. He says, first, I want to show you the example of a saint. Write that down if you're taking notes. I want to show you the example of a saint. And he says it right here. Abraham, come here. You're my saint for the day. I want to put you up to show folks what real faith looks like. Abraham, the Bible says, was justified or made right by his works 
when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. The word justified simply means to be declared righteous. That's what the word justified means, to be declared righteous. Why do I have to emphasize that? Because we know, child of God, that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's nobody from the pulpit to the door good enough to be in heaven. Good enough to be with Jesus. None of us. So stop that falsity that you're better than other people. you just a dressed up rag. Wish I had help today. We, we, we look at folk. I, I, I saw this on, you know, I, I know I need to get off and, and maybe they'll pass the law to stop it, but I got to get off TikTok. I really do. I really do. But I saw this TikTok where the woman said, man goes to church, hasn't been there in about maybe six months. As soon as he walks in the door, somebody says, where you been? He comes into the church. Um, they, they start talking about, and he came in late. And he said, you know, some of y'all come in here late like this is a club. And they start getting on the man. And a couple other things happen in the church. And he, he, he really felt bad leaving the church. You know, he, he felt no love. He said he left the church, went down to the corner, to the club, to the corner bar, ordered himself a, a brew, a drink. They served him up. Bartender was friendly. Hey, hey, you know, how you doing? Good to see you today. Served him the drink. He said he got his drink and he spilled it. And he got, you know, he's upset that he spilled the, the beer. And the bartender said, hey, man, don't worry about that. Wiped it up, said, it's, it happens. Don't worry about it. Guy next to him in the bar saw it and said, hey, bro, you all right? I got you. Hey, give him another one on me. And then the, and the, the story said, where do you think he felt the most love? Not only did, where you think he felt the most love, where do you think he's going to go back to? I wish I had help here. See, it, 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 you got to understand something. It's not so much about the environment. Well, let me see, see if I can put it the way I want to put it. It's not about the bar that he's trying to go after. It's about the feeling of the bar where people are friendly. I know, I'm, I know I'm, I'm really showing my age where everybody knows your name. <laughs> I wish I had help up in here today. <laughs> see? Where you think he's going to feel most comfortable? We don't show what our faith says we ought to do. So he brings the saint. He says, Abraham was justified, declared righteous. There's nothing right about him, but because he did what God said, God declared him righteous, saw him as righteous, and said, why? Because he was faithful in offering up his son Isaac on the altar. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. The Bible says, verse 23, it's right there, that Abraham was made righteous with God by faith. He believed God. That's correct. Here we go again. It's the one side of the coin. He believed God, so he was made righteous by his faith. But the scripture also says, but he also became righteous by his works when he carried out what God told him to carry out. Are y'all with me here? See, my faith has to be put in action. Stop telling people you go to church. Stop telling people what you believe. They'll see it better when you live what you believe. The scripture says we are living epistles read by men daily. They're not going to pick up their Bibles, but they're going to read you. How do I know that? Because I'm tired of hearing on the job when I mess up. Is that how Christians do? Is that how Christians act? The sinner knows better than the saint sometimes how they ought to act. Abraham demonstrated a faith that works, that has life, that is energetic, that is action-packed. And the faith of Abraham is what got him up the mountain and gave him the strength to bind and to get ready to put to death his own son on the altar. You know, that's some faith. See, y'all missing it. When God said, I need you to sacrifice your son. Now, now the back story is he couldn't have a son. He was having difficulty with a son. 
He was an old man, and yet God blessed him. And now after the blessing, God says it's time to give the blessing back. Oh, y'all ain't going to like this one. See, because when God gives a blessing, God is not an Indian giver, if that's the, of a term. He doesn't give back what he gives you. But the point is, is that when he blesses you, he wants to test you by how much you love him or the blessing. God will keep you faithful as long as you ride in Metro. The moment he give you a car, we won't see you again. I wish I had help over here today. I feel like preaching if you let me. God knows you. God knows what he can give you and what he can't. Because some of us can't handle certain blessings. Come on here. God give you a stack? You ain't going to go out in the street and pass out ones. You going somewhere else and pass out ones. I wish I, y'all. I wish. I'm sorry. I, I, I thought I was in another church. <laughs> Abraham lived his faith. His faith had life. And can I just say this to you very quickly? If your faith has no life, it's false. It's dead. Are y'all with me here? See, let me say this to you. Faith is our choice to allow God to act in and through us. Faith has less to do with us and more to do with letting God live in our lives. Are y'all with me here? And faith is our receptivity to God's activity. It's our faith in God that allows us to do certain things. We ought to walk around with signs on us that says, God at work. Come on, we sing it sometimes. God's not through with me. You know, please be patient with me. God's not through with me. Well, God's at work. I'm not perfect. I've still got issues. I say stuff I shouldn't say. My daughter wants to be my PR person. She says, Dad, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I know. Amen. But God ain't through with me yet. He's still working on me. It comes from a pure heart, not a, a corrupt mind. Are y'all with me here? So this visual faith has to be expressed in, in our lives. This action faith has to be expressed in our lives so that God can get glory out of our lives. Here we go. Number one, he shows us a saint. But then he shows us a sinner. Come here, Rahab. And you know Rahab and Abraham are two different people. Abraham's the father of the faith. Rahab is a streetwalker. I wish I had help here. Prostitute. He's a hoe. Oh, I, I can stop right there. Woo. There, there. <laughs> two different type of two different type of people. Now, the fact that Abraham was the father of faith and, and Rahab was, was a prostitute do, does not really show the difference. Here's the difference. Stay with me. I know where I'm going. Abraham was a Jew. Rahab was a Gentile. Abraham was a good man. Rahab sold her body uh, uh, for, for money and goods. Abraham was called a friend of God, while Rahab was placed in the number of the enemies of God. She, she, she wasn't a, a believer at first. Are y'all with me here? But what they had in common is that they showed action, or in their faith, they showed action that became alive, proving itself in their works. Now, y'all stay with me here. I've been preaching this long enough so you know that working does not save you. There's got to be both sides. I, I, I preach this long enough, so I hope I'm not leading somebody down the wrong path. It's not about outweighing your good. I've done all these good things. Here's my bad things. My good outweighs my bad. I'm going to get into heaven. We're not talking about that here. We're talking about a true belief and a true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that now is demonstrated in your actions. That's what we're talking about. Are you with me here? So Rahab lived in Jericho, lived in Jericho amongst, in the midst of the enemies of God. And because she saw God working 
and what God was doing through his people, she came to trust God. Ooh, there's the, there, I just preached. Y'all should have said amen. See, see, some of y'all are afraid to share your faith. Well, if you're afraid to share your faith, how about just living your faith so that others can see God in you and get interested in the God you serve? Rahab saw what God was doing in his people. And so if you know the story, we talked about this way back when we were going through uh, uh, the book of Joshua. So she protected the spies that God sent, and she risked her own life to protect them from hurt, harm, and danger. What an amazing faith she displayed. Now, now, now watch this. I want y'all to catch this. Nobody gave her a track. Nobody brought her to church. She just saw the glory and the goodness of God and caught fire with it and immediately put what she saw into action by helping out those who were being oppressed by the people in the area. She had a great faith, and her work proved that her faith was not just here, y'all ain't liking this, or here, but it was alive and in action. So what happened? When judgment came to Jericho, you know the story, the wall, and, 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 and I think we went over this when we did Joshua, but she lived in the mountain part of a wall in the corner. If, you, if you've ever been to Israel, you see how they live. She lived up in a corner, and the Bible says that when the wall collapsed, her little house stayed still. Well, I'm, I just feel like shouting right here. I heard Danny Bell Hall, I'm really uh, 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 dating myself. I heard Danny Bell Hall say, when the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter and when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Oh, Lord, have mercy. With all the midst of the destruction because of her faith in God, God held her house while he collapsed everything around her. Are y'all with me here? And so Rahab, faith was alive. She lived it. And, and here's the deep part. I, 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 my time is up. But here's the deep part. If you look at the story of Rahab, and I want y'all to catch this. She saw God's people that worked and believed, listen, and put her faith into action before she really got understanding. Oh, boy, oh, boy. All y'all come to Bible study, not y'all, other churches. All y'all come to Bible study. You sit in church every Sunday. You got all this knowledge, yet you still sit on the premises instead of standing on the promises. She had faith in what she saw before she even got an understanding of what she believed. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So he brings a, sa a saint. He brings in Abraham. Then he brings in a sinner. He brings in Rahab and uses the example of the sinner to show us that even the minutest, smallest amount of faith is the most unlikely vessel that God will still use to produce good works. Are y'all with me here? I'm done. Here it is, last one. He shows us a saint. He shows us a sinner. But then he shows us the spirit. It's right there in verse 26. He says this. He says, um, your body, if you separate the spirit from your body, all that's left is a dead body. <sighs> now, you've heard me say this years ago. When a body dies and the mortician has the body in preparation, the body gives every indication that it's alive. This ain't, this ain't no old man jinking stuff. The body still grows hair, nails. Sometimes air left in the lungs will cause the, 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 the body to exasperate and say, <sighs> are y'all with me here? Sometimes the body will sit up. I'm with you. I'm out. 
See, they, 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 they talking to old man jingles on the wall, but let a body in the morgue get up and breathe and do all that stuff? Oh, no, no, no. This ain't night of the living dead. No, no. I'm done. Here's the difference. Stay with me. I'm done. Here it is. The mortician is trained Ooh. that whatever that body does, he or she knows is dead. It could sing a dance. He knows it's dead. It could do whatever it wants to do. They know it's dead. And they keep about their business to prepare that body for the service. Oh, Lord. There's some Bible in here. Bible says you need to reckon your bodies as dead. Meaning what? That when your body, see, when you became a servant for Christ, the Lord saved you, filled you, and the Bible says you're now dead to sin because he gave you life. But sometimes your body will raise up on you. This dead body will raise up and say, I need a drink. I need a smoke. Look at, look at that hair. Look at that hair. I need that right there. Your body will start to talk to you. But you got to be a trained mortician. I wish I had somebody. You got to tell your body, you dead. I don't need that. I don't need a taste. I don't need that because I've been dead. I, my body is dead. I've been reconciled with Christ. I don't need that any longer. So here's what he says. He says, listen, you can tell a fake faith. Why? By the Spirit. He says, if a body is separated from the Spirit, then all that's left is that dead body. Watch this. But if your faith is separated from works, then all you have left is dead faith or a false faith. In other words, uh, uh, all you have is a faith that is dead but looks alive, talks like it's alive, walks like it's alive, but it has no power behind it. And so what he says here is you got to be careful, he says, because there are many people who have a dead faith who try to make themselves look like they are alive as possible. Oh, Lord, I'm done. I'm going to offend some people right here. Sorry, Leah, but here it is. They sing in the choir. They play in the band. They preach from the pulpit. They on the deacon's ministry. They deaconess. Wish I had help here. They in the singles ministry. I can go on and on if you stop me. But they're all over the church, but they're dead. But they're giving you the impression that they are alive. Because there's no spirit that's allowing them to operate in the power of God. And so faith has no love, faith has no light, and faith has no life. You've got to understand that that fake faith exists. Can I just give you this last example so I show you real quick, and I'm done. Here it is. Watch this. There's a story of a boy who was six years old, and his father was a minister, and they lived in the parsonage of the church. One night, the alarms in the town went off, and they could smell the smoke. And when people came out of their house and looked, it was the parsonage that was on fire. People ran to see how they could help. The alarms had gone on. They could hear the fire engines coming. They weren't there yet. The, the place was engulfed. And the mother and the father, the pastor of the church and his wife, were outside. They had made it outside. And all of a sudden, somebody said to them in the panic, where's your son? And they realized that their son had not gotten out. So the father, who's a pastor, jumped on his knees and started praying, Lord, save my son. Lord, I need you. Stop by. I need you right now. I believe in you that you are a protector and a provider. Save my son. The mother looked at him like she was crazy ran to the neighbors and grabbed a ladder, put the ladder up against the door, and her and a neighbor climbed up and grabbed her son out of the house and saved him, rescued him from the flaming house. What you saying, Pastor? There's times when the best way to express your faith 
is to get off your knees and go to your neighbor and do the work that needs to be done that your faith tells you. I wish I had help here. Examine yourself and make sure that your faith is at work. Here's the problem. Oh, I'm closing my thing up. Here's the problem. The problem is, I hear that organ. Don't let me start up in here. I, the problem is that the folks that use fake faith are robbing themselves of the true joy that comes when you truly believe in God. You are settling for scraps, settling for less when God wants to give you his best. Your faith is fake. And when you don't allow God full access, you miss out on the benefits and the blessings of God. Are y'all with me here? A little boy said to his dad, Dad, I want to go to the circus. And his father said, well, I don't really have the money to send you to the circus. He said, Dad, I've never been. I've heard about it. I really want to go. And his dad said, okay, I tell you what, I love you so much. Here's what I want you to do. Do all your chores. You do every one of your chores, I'll make sure you go to the circus. The boy got up early, did his bed, did the sweeping, did the cleaning, did all his chores. He said, Dad, I, I, I'm ready. I, I, I'm ready to go. I finished everything. His dad said, okay. He pulled out a $10 bill. He gave it to his son. He said, here's your money for the circus. The little boy had never seen that much money, $10. Woo -hoo. Okay. He got on his bike. He rode down to where the circus was. And when he got there, they had a parade. And he saw the elephants. He saw the tigers. He saw all of the, the performers. And they were coming by and they were juggling. They were doing, he was just so happy watching this parade. And then the last part of the parade were the clowns. And the clowns came through honking their noses and their horns and laughing and giggling people, you know, tickling people. And he was excited. And, and when the last clown was passing, he said to the clown, wait, wait, wait. And he handed the clown his $10. And he went home happy. And his dad said, boy, that was fast. I, I thought you were going to go to the circus. She said, Dad, I, I, I did go. They had a parade. And I saw the parade. I saw the elephants. I saw the clowns. I saw the jugglers. I saw everybody. And, and he said, and I, and I gave the clown my $10, and I came home. Woohoo! And the father said, son, that was the parade. You missed out on the circus. You were happy with the parade when you should have went to the circus because what you saw at the parade was just a highlight of what was going to be at the circus. Oh, Lord, have mercy. See, some of us are giving our $10 to the parade. We come to church thinking that this is what it's all about, but there's much more to your faith than just this. When you truly trust and never doubt, God will bring you out and begin to do things in your life that will give you a greater experience of what he's like. Don't be confined to two hours on a Sunday because for two hours you can just have a good time. But the real fun, the real faith, the real belief in Jesus starts when the church is over. When you walk out of these doors, when you go out into society, you carry your faith with you. And when you walk out that door, folks can truly see what Jesus is all about. Yeah, that's where real faith comes in. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. And the joy we share as we walk in terror there. None other can ever know. That's the real faith. That's the faith that we really want. Not just fake stuff, but real deal stuff. When you trust in him and allow him to bless you forevermore. Come on, stand to your feet this morning.